Hello and welcome to the Devon Man Shed. Now in this video I'm going to build this. This is a 148 scale Tamiya Mosquito. I saw this on Amazon being sold for £22 with free delivery. Which I thought was a bargain. So it came in the post today. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a video of this uh, being assembled and painted. I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail with it because it would literally take hours uh, for me to uh, film this build. So it'll be a bit of a condensed build. Now uh, what I should be probably doing is showing you a sub-assembly um, sort of before and after assembly and I'll be explaining the uh, products I use and tools etc. As I like to think that these videos I upload on YouTube uh, lean towards more the uh, novice so uh, apologies if I uh, come across as trying to tell you how to suck eggs but um, there could be uh, people out there who, uh, who are complete novices at this and uh, just welcome a bit of information to help them start on their way in this hobby because uh, I'm here to not to promote, uh, promote me I'm not here to promote me uh, channel I certainly don't promote any of the products in this video but what I think I'm promoting is uh, the actual hobby itself so uh, I hope that comes across now um, what I shall do next I shall uh, um, go through the box and um, we'll see the contents so I'll see you in the next clip right now I've obviously already been into this box and uh, the first thing I do is um, I actually go through to make sure I've got all the paints I feel confident I have but I need to cross reference them and you'll probably see here that uh, being a Tamiya kit they actually make their own paint and they're giving me reference numbers as to what paint I use now I use um, Vallejo model air paints and what I have to do is uh, I have to cross reference these um, Tamiya codes with the uh, paints that I use and uh, I haven't done too bad I think there's about uh, six paints missing there but they might not be paints that I need for this build now um, what I use sometimes for this for cross referencing is I use this it's hobby color converter and you can go on to the Google Play Store and it don't cost anything to download you just open it up and here's a list of all the model paint manufacturers now at the moment we've got uh, Tamiya and uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll put that one in there and it will come up with uh, all the paints and then all you have to do then is choose the paint that is suggesting in the kit click on it and it comes up with a list of paints from the other manufacturers so uh, in this instance I know that uh, what I'm looking for is um, uh, the 7-1 uh, designation here which is the model air paint so I, it's got a 71003 and it's saying it's an 86% match so I use this now sometimes um, they don't have a match um, for other manufacturers and sometimes you have to just go by the, by the name of the paint um, I've had to do that on this kit but this is quite uh, an invaluable tool if you uh, decide to uh, use a different paint than what the, the uh, kit suggests and just going on here there's me Vallejo ones there's me model air click on that and there we go there's the list of all the uh, paints on the model air thing and again I can click on those and cross reference them to something else 
so this is quite an invaluable thing this so that's what I use so once the paints have been sorted out it's a case of just checking over the uh, parts we've got the clear parts here and we've got uh, one two there's two sprues in there so that's four and there's two sprues in there so there's six sprues what I mean by sprues is the frames or trees some people call them trees but uh, I call them a sprue and then we've got the uh, decals here and it looks like they're giving you a choice of two different types of uh, finishes here different markings and uh, this is typical Tammy of this they give you a really good detail regarding how to paint it and, and uh, the camouflage etc that's a nice touch there so that's what you basically get for 22 quid right we're on our way folks now this is rather unusual this kit because all the other planes I've built in the past they all start off with the cockpit area being built and then the two fuselage house being put together uh, this seems to be doing a completely different uh, method of doing this um, or procedure I should say now I'm going to make these two nacelles up these are the engine cowlings it's saying I've got to glue some exhaust pipes on there and uh, the covers for the pipes now after studying this and looking at it um, I've decided not to bother gluing these exhaust pipes simply because these um, um, exhaust pipe cowlings once they're glued to that nacelle you can't see those pipes so what's the point of gluing them and painting them they're asking you to paint them as well so I haven't bothered gluing those exhaust um, things it's just something else to wait for to, to set before you can move on to the next job and uh, if you can't see these parts when it's put together what is the point of doing it there are guys out there who persevere and do this simply because they're there but uh, I'm not one of them so going back to the painting they're saying you need to paint the insides well I'm not going to bother doing that either because I need to blanket spray this airframe with a primer and if I go painting the inside of these nacelles I'm going to have to mask them all up so that's a job that can be done further down the line so the two halves have been joined and the um, exhaust covers have been put on there and they've obviously been joined together in the two halves now we have one half of the uh, wing and we're having to glue these parts to them uh, the instructions are saying here where this is shaded that these need painting again again I'm not going to bother um, you'll also notice I've highlighted these things here because uh, these are clear plastic parts and uh, I'm I'm not going to go gluing these clear plastic parts to these wings until the end of the build um, because it means more extra masking up etc so what I do is if I omit something from the procedure I highlight it and if I've done it I put a stro pen stroke through what I've done so that uh, when I'm halfway through the build I can go back to the beginning have a look see if there's anything I've left out and maybe I can um, assemble those parts or maybe still have to leave them again until later alright now it's showing you how to glue the two wing halves together and it also shows you how to um, glue the nacelles to the wing as well now there's not flag uh, or it is flagging up some painting there's some shade in there again I'm ignoring it um, so these actual parts here um, I've actually finished and they're here
Now as well as um, obviously gluing the parts together I come across instances where you get uh, gaps in the assembly let's try and get that focus for you see that white line down there well that's filler I filled that in and uh, that and the top of the exhaust shrouds I had to lay some uh, filler in there as well because they weren't too too good a fit now what I also noticed when I was reading further on these wings need a, the, the, the tips gluing on for some reason they've left this right to the last well that's no good to me they need to be glued on so that I can get on and spray them so I've glued these wing tips on as well uh, same with the uh, the other wing again I've had to run filler down there and that one needed filler both sides on there sometimes you, you, it can't be helped you might get a finger mark of glue on there where you've got a bit of glue on your finger and you've done that it's left a fingerprint don't worry about it because I'll tell you what I use I use a scotch uh, pad and all you do is rub that over your fingerprint and it will take it off and this is what I use after I've rubbed down the um, filler I use 320 this is uh, emery cloth I wouldn't advise you to, uh, to use anything more coarser than that um, 240 is um, a bit too too harsh really so I use 320 on there and I just use that to uh, rub around the edges you know don't be scared to sort of go around once you, your wings are uh, stuck together and just do this it gets rid of all the glue that's oozed out around the seam and uh, if you uh, profile it it uh, makes it really nice and neat and it also gets rid of the little bits of plastic that were left from taking them off the uh, sprue so while I'm on the subject of plastic I use um, this here I've never used anything else there could be something better right there but as far as I'm concerned whenever I use this it's lovely to use it's really nice and soft to rub down it don't take very long to uh, harden and uh, I just apply it with a cocktail stick and it comes out in the way of a tube here they do give you a nozzle but that nozzle ain't a lot of good so I'll get a cocktail stick scoop that off and then just lay it on so that's the uh, filler I use so that's that covered there so what I'm going to talk about now is the fact that the instructions next are telling me to um, assemble the undercarriage now there are three things I I don't do when I when I build a plane and that's build the undercarriage um, glue the prop on or glue the clear plastic canopy on a plane those three items are left right to the end simply because they're so delicate that you could break them while you're building the uh, the main frame up so I'm going to ignore the undercarriage I've highlighted it here so that I can, when I go back through the instructions so I know I haven't done it um, again this is the uh, landing gear again for, for the other side etc much the same as the other one and here they're showing you to glue it to the uh, nacelles now there is one thing I might have to do I don't know sometimes you can get away with gluing these flaps in position and then putting the undercarriage in but sometimes they have to be glued afterwards um, because of the way that these go in there's probably sometimes then there's not, not enough room to accommodate the uh, actual uh, landing gear to go inside there it, uh, it might impede it so what I'm going to do I'm going to leave these off for a minute and I'll glue those on later 
along with the uh, undercarriage. So we're now where we would normally be now, we're uh, to the uh, stage where they want us to do some assembly of the cockpit area. Now I need to study this because again uh, this is a very well detailed kit and there's an awful lot of um, detail involved with this cockpit area and I'm worried I'm going to spend time gluing all these parts, painting them because I'm going to have to hand paint them. I don't bother setting up my airbrush to do this, I, I brush paint this lot and uh, I don't want to go to the trouble of uh, painstakingly painting everything and then when the fuselage goes together you can't see it so I need to study as to what will actually be seen through the canopy and that's all I'll be doing again there's modelers out there who will go to that extent um, I mean that's, that's their prerogative but uh, I really don't see the point so I'll crack on with that and uh, I'll see you in the next clip. Right, these are the parts for the cockpit area. These are sub assemblies that then had to be glued to this area here. This is uh, basically part of the floor of the plane. And then I had to do the larger part of the floor. Now, this has spars glued to it, these are actually wing supports for when you. Um, glue the wings on and then we came to the more finer detail parts there's another sub assembly there that had to be glued to that and then that gets glued to another part of the floor with all these small items and then the whole lot then becomes one main assembly now um, I decided from the start that I would um, paint this cockpit detail because out of all the planes I've built um, there's very little um, cockpit area to actually uh, paint sometimes you only get something from like the seat to, towards the um, um, control area and that uh, that bit there normally doesn't warrant setting my airbrush up but because this is more elaborate I've decided to uh, airbrush this and I've glued all the parts uh, that were necessary for this for this part of this assembly here I was thinking about um, deleting some of them because they wouldn't be seen through the uh, cockpit area but um, because of the way the assembly went together I've ended up gluing them anyway so I shall probably uh, concentrate on the uh, detail sort of uh, from from this area here forward um, because I think you can uh, you won't be able to see this bit at the back here I think you'll probably just about see this seat here um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to um, spray this with a primer and then spray it green and then I shall do some detailing um, so that's where I am with it here we have it all done now um, what I shall probably do is uh, in the next clip go through the paints that I use and uh, then I'll progress on to uh, the actual spraying of it so I'll see you in the next clip well I just thought I'd go through the paint that I'll be using on this build first of all I use this primer here this is made by a company called Badger I've tried other dedicated primers through my airbrush and I haven't got on with them but this uh, this particular product here works really well I haven't had any problems with it whatsoever I just tip the contents into the cup of my um, airbrush I don't have to thin it don't have to add any flow improver and it just works straight away it's an acrylic water based paint so the first thing I do whenever I buy a, a brand new pot of paint I'll drop a nut inside so that uh, it guarantees that my paints um, mix properly I also top it up with deionized water till it reaches halfway up the neck uh, that's just something I personally do just to increase the volume 
So that's what I use in the way of a primer. The top coat I use these Vallejo model airs. These are a Spanish product. Um, these um, these are much like the primer. You just literally tip the contents out of the bottle into your airbrush and away you go. Now the pigments are ground down really fine in these and that's what makes them uh, particularly special for airbrush work hence the model air uh, designation. They get a fantastic range of paints and I've never had any issues with these whatsoever and I've stuck with them. If, uh, if I get good um, if I get good results with a particular uh, um, brand then I'll stick to it. So that's what I, what I use for top coats. Brush painting I use Humbrew acrylic. There's a lot of guys out there who uh, aren't all that keen on this paint. Uh, it's absolutely useless for putting through your airbrush. It's strictly a brush painting product and uh, I just uh, have a few of these for touching up the cockpit areas, maybe painting the um, pilots etc and just doing little odd touches on the un undercarriage perhaps uh, so that's what I use there this again is an acrylic like the uh, the other two so again I do the same usual routine put a nut inside the pot and just top them up halfway up the neck now once the plane's been painted um, I have to seal the paint and also create a smooth surface to put the decals on and that's where I use this Humbrol Clear varnish. Um, this is quite thick when you buy it. I tend to have to thin this down 50-50 and I use white spirit for doing that. I don't go buying the dedicated thinners because you don't get enough of it and it's expensive. So I use that to create a nice smooth surface and to protect me paint. And then once the decals are on, I then spray it with a Humbrol matte varnish. This again is um, thinned down 50-50 with uh, white spirit. And uh, this, this dries quite nicely actually. It just, just dries quicker than it does the gloss. Uh, and uh, I'm, well, I'm well pleased with the way that turns out. These are uh, vape bottles that I scrounge off the guys at work. These are fantastic for dispensing small amounts of this one's got white spirit in I've got one here with deionized water uh, so if you know anybody who vapes um, they're, they're well worth um, commandeering there's always a use for small bottles so there we go right now I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because at the end of the day this is going to be hid away and I'm not looking to get in the same sort of finish as I would from doing the outside of the plane so um, I shall be just spraying what I need to be sprayed and um, that'll be it I've got some other pieces I need to be sprayed primer as well I might as well um, spray those while I've got the primer in the gun so uh, Away we go. Now what I also need to spray are the inside of the um, fuselage. Now, I only need to spray sort of uh, from there onwards, forwards because this is where the bulkhead is going to sit and this is where the, the actual um, canopy finishes so what I'm going to do is just spray that bit there there we go and we'll do the same on the other half So, I 
and also looking further ahead I need to spray the inside of these because this is uh, something that gets glued on to the end of the fuse large this again is something unusual normally when I put uh, a fuse large together it's uh, one complete length this on the other hand has got uh, um, a separate nose that needs to be glued on I don't know why that is maybe the uh, maybe it's because they uh, manufacture other kits for the later model where the nose is different perhaps I don't know but might as well be prime now like I say I'm not making too much of a fuss about this I do like a primer before I paint anything even when I brush paint right where we go Right, I'm going to show you. Right, I'm going to show you what dry brushing is all about. Now, what I basically want to do, I want to bring out the highlights of the uh, detail on this, and the way to go about it is to uh, firstly, I'm using a silver paint here. Um, I don't know which number it is, number eleven Humbrol. I'm just sticking my brush in the pot and then I'm just going to wipe as much as I can off back into the pot and then I'm going to rub that brush over this absorbent towel and I'll keep doing that until no other paint seems to be coming away from the brush There we go, completely dry, no sign of any paint, but there is obviously some paint on here. Now I'm using a very soft bristle brush here, and all I'm going to do now is just flick this over the detail, and whatever paint is on the brush will uh, attach itself to the edges of the detail, and um, it would naturally highlight them. So. It's just a case of brushing your brush over like that. What you're doing, you're giving it a bit of a distressed look. Now technically these planes were made of wood um, 
I mean, this is, is re representing maybe um, an aluminium built plane that's had the paint scuffed off of it, etc. So there's probably rivet counters out there saying I shouldn't be doing this, but I've just decided to do this just to show you the technique. And there we go. No, I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if it's going to focus that well. But that has actually highlighted all the detail. Right, I've had to paint the figures that are going to be glued into the cockpit so I've done done that job there and that brings us on then to joining these two halves of the fuselage together along with the cockpit assembly I've uh, glued this rear mud guard uh, but the rest of the stuff that they're saying glue on here ain't going to be able to see that once it's joined so I basically ain't gonna bother with it and down here we've got the two nose pieces um, these shaded place pieces are uh, telling you to paint those as well and again uh, I'm not gonna bother I've sprayed the inside of the fuselage green and um, that that uh, that's good enough as far as I'm concerned I'm not gonna go to the trouble of painting this so, we've got the two halves, we've got the two nose pieces, and we've got the assembly here with the pilots attached. So the next job I'm going to do is glue all that together, so I'll see you in the next clip. Right now, after assembling this lot here, it then goes on to show you how to glue the parts regarding the bomb bay now this is something you can um, add yourself if you want to or or, or go without really um, I tend to not bother with this because I tend to build my aircraft with the undercarriage down uh, in a takeoff or landing mode so um, all this here you could actually glue this to the, to the uh, fuselage if you want but I'm not going to bother because my um, bomb bay doors are going to be closed and that's where we come on to this now they've shown me the two pilots and all the various colours and things so I've done that uh, I've glued them into into position and the two halves of the fuselage and the cockpit area have been glued together and then that's where we come to the bomb bay doors um, it's showing here that uh, if you want to um, display your bomb loading, your bomb bay, you have to cut down through the centre of this moulding to make it into two parts to glue it in that position there. Now I, I'm going to obviously have the uh, bomb doors closed, so there's no need for me to scribe that. So it's a case of gluing it onto the fuselage there next so that's my next job <coughs> excuse me 
here's the fuselage glued together I've had to leave that overnight I've still got the tape on the front nose piece because this uh, this is where the nose piece was joined to the uh, fuselage the other. and as you can see I've got the, the figures in there um, that went together quite well I always dry fit um, my parts in other words I always uh, place them together without any glue to make sure that they will go together properly and that fuselage was a was a joy to put together I never had any trouble with it whatsoever I just held it together with some masking tape and uh, like I say I've left it overnight and it's dried really well so my next step is to glue the bomb bay doors in because uh, as you're aware I'm going to blanket spray this so that might as well be glued in position um, so I can spray it so that's the next stage I'm going to do so I'll see you in the next clip right I've progressed quite a lot since the last clip I glued the Bombay doors here I glued the wings to the fuselage you can also see that I've also gone ahead and glued these undercarriage doors I was going to leave these off till last but it looks like uh, the undercarriage assemblies will go down through there okay so I've glued those and I've glued the rear wings on and uh, you'll also notice I've got some cotton wool here I use this to stuff down inside the cockpit I find this is uh, really soft and pliable you haven't got to uh, prod it too much to get it to tuck in and cover everything and I find that ideal um, for when I want to mask something up I used to use tape and it was a right pain to do it using tape so um, that that's what that is just ordinary soft cotton wool I glued the uh, rear um, rear wings on and everything went together really well I never had any fit issues I never had to put any filler down there or down there or even underneath it's uh, totally gap free same with the rear wings and uh, all in all that went together really nice so it's now ready to be primed so I'll see you in the next clip <coughs> Right, I've gone ahead and sprayed the airframe with the primer. It doesn't look like there's going to be any more filling needed. Sometimes when you put the primer on, it can flag up uh, some some fit issues. But it looks like this is okay. So in the next few clips, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the start and finish of spraying the um, underside. And uh, painting the... Um, the upper surface which is going to be two colors and then the final clip will be the actual clear varnish being applied now these clips are going to just going to be short ones like I say they're just going to I'm just going to show you the start and finish of each color I've also got to decide what scheme to do this in because it looks like there's a choice so I've yet undecided what uh, what colors I'm going to use so I'll see you in the next clip regarding spraying the uh, underneath so I'll see you then right I've decided on the scheme I'm going to use and fortunately enough it's the one that uh, matches this this is uh, what came in the kit and you can use the um, use this drawing as a template for your camouflage I'm not going to bother with that um, I'm just going to do my own camouflage scheme and uh, the three colours I need are the dark green and ocean grey that's the dark green 324 and the ocean grey is 273 so that's the two upper colours and the one I'm going to start to do now is the medium C grey which is a 307 and that's what I'm going to spray the underneath so they gave me 
a choice here um, that explains the three different uh, color schemes there the one I've highlighted is the one I'm going to follow right before I start the airbrush has got a 0.3 needle in it and I'm running at 18 psi I don't uh, tend to change my needle sizes I've got a 0.2 and a 0.5 I can use in this but I've never used them I find a 0.3's um, adequate enough and 18 psi is uh, more than adequate really if the paint struggles to come out the airbrush then I'll just thin it down but with these paints I use they go, just go straight into the uh, cup and uh, they're ready to use so I'm going to start now then very little difference in the uh, actual shade of the primer and this actual paint I'm using so I'm having to sort of pick up the light so that I can see that I'm not missing anything although this will probably have about three coats maybe I'll just do a light one to start with Right, all I need to do is uh, spray this half of this wing because this is what I've been using to hold to uh, spray the rest of it. So it's just a case of finishing this off and then it's, uh, and it's done. Yeah, the paint's been um, left in the pot too long. This is what happens when uh, you leave paint in the cup for about 10 minutes. It affects your spray pattern. But we're all right now. There we go. Right, I'm going to put that on my rack, which is behind me. That rack I've got uh, screwed to this um, wall of my shed, and down there I've got a convector heater, and that's sending up a nice, gentle, warm bit of heat for that to uh, help dry off now you've noticed I haven't done any masking because there's no need to the colors on the upper part are going to be darker um, that's why I always spray the uh, underneath first because it tends to be the lighter color so the masking stage would be the next uh, next bit after this is dried now the nice thing about this plate is you probably see me use these crocodile clips on the end of these uh, bits of doweling 
And the nice thing with this is I can just drop them in there with a part clamp to it and um, I can dry those off as well so it's quite a handy thing to have just to accelerate the drying not necessarily to uh, uh, get the next coat on but just to dry it so you can handle it so that's going to be left overnight because uh, I'm, as I said there's going to be masking involved uh, with this and I don't want to go risking um, masking it up too quick only to find that the masking tape peels the paint off that needs to harden overnight and this is where patience comes in with this hobby so um, that's it till the next clip so uh, I'll see you in a minute right I've left this overnight it's nice and hard now so I've applied the masking tape it's taken me about an hour and a half to do this uh, it's not uh, something I relish but I've had to do it in case any overspray goes on the uh, underneath now I use Tamiya masking tape because I find that's probably the best tape out there regarding uh, modeling tapes and uh, what I don't use is this stuff because um, whenever you use this it's going to do um, either one or two things or both firstly it's likely to rip the paint off and secondly it tends to leave a couple of tram lines of glue where the glue's oozed out from the edge of the tape and will it come off? No so don't ever use this go and buy a dedicated Tamiya masking tape this is a 6mm I also use a 10 now the most important thing about a uh, masking tape is keeping the edges clean because as soon as you take that out that bag and drop it on your on your worktop surface it's going to pick up dirt and uh, what you're relying on is the actual wedge of this tape so what you need to do is go and buy yourself a dispenser this again is made by Tamiya you can buy these empty or you can buy them with a, with a roller tape inside but the nice thing is it keeps the tape nice and clean and it, uh, it's likely to get you a better, better edge on your, on your spraying. You can get them different widths, this is my 10mm, again got a 10mm dispenser for it. So uh, that's what I use for masking tape. Now guess what's happened? I was determined not to glue these on until right at the end of the build and I should have done because while I was masking up two of these broke off so uh, I should have listened to myself at the beginning and left it it's not a problem I can re-glue them back on but it's more time waiting for the glue to dry so that I can crack on because this obviously needs painting so uh, I'm a bit pissed off with that but um, like I said I should have listened to myself at the beginning and done what I was planning on doing which is gluing these right at the last right so I'll see you in the next clip where I'm going to start uh, spraying the top half um, which will be uh, the ocean grey the 273 so I'll see you in a minute right where we go Yeah, yeah, again, this grey is only just slightly darker than the primer. Right, there ain't a lot of difference in it. Frame tight. Well, same as before, just got this bit left to uh, spray. And then uh, 
I can put it on one side and let it dry off. Right, that's it. Put it on my shelf behind me. Right, yet another hour and a half has gone by. A lot of guys out there tend to do their camouflage free hand with their airbrush, but I tend to mask mine up. I use this stuff. Again, it's another Tamiya product. It's very narrow masking tape. It's um, very pliable so you can uh, create curves with it so that's uh, that's what I use obviously in between I um, mask up using the 10 mil tape right I'm ready to uh, start spraying so where we go Right, apologies for not showing the last bit of the spraying of the green, only I've had endless trouble of trying to apply that paint. It was um, spitting out of the airbrush, and when it wasn't spitting, it wasn't actually coming out the, uh, the nozzle either. And uh, I didn't really have a clue why. And I ended up stripping my airbrush down. And I put it back together, tried it again, still the same problem. So then I decided to do what I don't normally do, and that is try and thin the paints. And I tried thinning them, and that still didn't work. I added glycerine to it to act as a, um, a flow aid. That didn't work, so I came to the conclusion that maybe airbrush O-rings are probably on, on their way out. So I had a spare airbrush that I bought. Um, specifically for spare parts and uh, I rigged that up put the paint in that and I had the same problem so I came to the conclusion that the paint was um, faulty on it so I threw the bottle in the bin now being a common paint colour that I use I happen to have a, a brand new one in stock so uh, I used a brand new paint in my brand new airbrush and it worked um, perfect so uh, I'm, I came to the conclusion it was the paint after all now following morning when I came down and, f and switched my compressor on about five minutes went by and I thought well this compressor is still running why is that so I had a look at it and it's leaking through the safety valve so I got a spanner went to undo it and it just came away and uh, it left an insert in the actual tank of the uh, compressor and I couldn't get this insert out so I ended up having to drill it out and then uh, what was left um, I managed to drill um, and tap an M10 thread and I've um, basically done away with the safety valve and put a 10mm bolt in place of it 
Now, could that have been my problem regarding the paint? That I don't know yet, but I'm just about to find out because I'm about to spray this with a gloss, humble gloss. So we'll see how we get on. So uh, I'll see you in the next clip. Right, let's uh, let's see what happens now then when I go to spray this. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. That's spraying really well. So I think I've come to the conclusion that although the paint wasn't uh, too clever, it looks like that valve that um, was starting to leak wasn't doing me any favours either. So I might be able to go back to using my original airbrush now. Because like I say, I did buy this simply because it was so cheap on Amazon. I thought I'll have that for spare parts to service the other one. How many compressor works? Well, it should. Right, I just got the uh, tail plane to finish off, and this has uh, been far more successful than it was last night. So I'm pleased about that. This gloss coat basically I put on here just to actually protect the paint but also its main reason of doing this is uh, for the decals because if you try and put decals on a matte surface you get something called silvering and uh, it can ruin a model so although there's only like small particular places where the decals have got to go on here I always blanket spray the aircraft and there we go This enclosure is uh, simply that, it's just an enclosure, there's, there's no um, fan to uh, extract the fumes with this. Um, I don't have anywhere in the shed to permanently fix it, so uh, that's the reason why I've got no extraction here. And this is just something I made up out of some packing um, cases. So. Uh, it's my choice um, not to have extraction. I know it's uh, not the sort of thing you should do nowadays, but uh, that's the way it is, unfortunately. So, I'll see you in the next clip. Right, there we go, folks. It's all completed. I've managed to glue the undercarriage flaps back on. That was fairly straightforward. Didn't have any problems there. The rear wheel has been fitted the uh, the undercarriage went in there quite well I had to do a bit of maneuvering to get the uh, actual uh, undercarriage frame to sit where it's supposed to but uh, I managed to do that in the end and uh, the prop and the spinners have gone on now I'm a bit disappointed because uh, the spinners should um, have a profile like this one's got here but this one is and uh, got like like a flat on the front of it it looks like it's what they call a short molding where the uh, plastic hasn't gone and injected itself all the way around the cavity and it's a shame that's happened um, that's unusual on a Tamiya kit now uh, the modelers out there who would probably profile that but uh, I'm not one of them I'm gonna leave it as it is the clear plastic parts went on okay. Now, whenever I have to finish a canopy off, I have to mask it up 
and cut round the frame of the actual window and uh, then spray it now this kit here offered decals to apply inside the actual canopy uh, to represent what I would normally paint and I thought what a bloody good idea that was but uh, once I'd stuck this to the fuselage I then realised that uh, the colour of the decal is nowhere near what it should be this is a, a, the, uh, the proper colour and this is more like a grass green um, so I was a bit disappointed with that um, there's no raised area where I could have got away with uh, masking it up anyway because uh, the um, because they've um, supplied decals in that they haven't raised the uh, framework so um, I've had no option but to use those decals and uh, that's about it it's uh, been a bit of a long-winded build because uh, I normally start with a cockpit and this kit started with uh, the, the nacelles and the wings and um, it sort of uh, put me off kilter a little bit because uh, it's not norm the normal procedure I, uh, I use for making a plane and I think if I'd um, started with the uh, the cockpit area um, I think I probably would have finished this a lot quicker but uh, there you go right so uh, I'm going to make a stand for that and uh, hopefully uh, it'll collect dust somewhere on a shelf so um, thanks for watching this video um, thanks to all my subscribers out there and um, I'll probably see you in the next video so I'll see you then. Bye now.